there and welcome to our online message for this week. Before I begin, however, I would like to uh, express our prayers and our concern, our support for the folks of Bridgetown Baptist Church, for their pastor and the congregation in the town on the loss of the, the church building uh, to a fire uh, today, Friday, or Saturday. And uh, we just want to pray that God will just wrap his arms around you and you will know his His support and guidance in the days and weeks and months to come as you look um, to the future and what this loss means for you and how you will overcome. And we know with God, all things are possible. And we will just be praying for you uh, for strength. My name is Deanne Carter, and I serve as the pastor of Margaretsville and Lower Granville Baptist Churches, two churches uh, in the valley. And um, I want to thank you for joining with me. If this is your first time or if you're a regular, each week I post our message online and I'll also invite you to join with us in person. We meet at 10 a.m. in Margaretsville and 2 p.m. in Lower Granville and would love to have you join with us. Following along with our, our Bible studies, I'm going to start a new sermon series today on the book of Colossians. This four chapter epistle written by the Apostle Paul is rich. It is very rich with content for us as to what God has done for us through Jesus, his son. And because of what he has done, who he is, what he is like, we see what we should do. So I'm looking forward to getting into this book and studying it in our Bible studies and also preaching a sermon series on uh, the various aspects of each chapter. So I want us to stop today before we start and, and think. If someone who knew us really well were to write a letter about our church, our home church, what would they include in the letter? How would we be described? What is our reputation as a church? Well, we hope it would be positive, of course, that they would have good things to say about our fellowship, about our qualities as believers, who we are as, as Christians, our heart for others, our relationship and our service to the Lord. Well, as Paul starts this letter, he is writing to the church at Colossae. And he begins with greetings and gratitude, as he usually does with his letters. He expresses his love and his prayers for the Colossian church. Now, Paul didn't start this church, and he had actually never been to visit this church either. But he had heard about them, and he cared deeply about them. They had a reputation. Now, what had he heard? Well, he had heard a lot of good things, encouraging things about them. And he tells us some of those encouraging things in these in this passage. Now, the things Paul tells us about the Colossian church are things that we, the church, in Marketsville, in Lower Granville, wherever your home church is, uh, to those of you who are listening, we would do well today to take note of. All churches would do well to take note of these, these qualities that Paul mentions about the Colossian church and foster them in your congregations. So what did Paul heard? What, what are the qualities? Well, in verse four, we, and this is Paul and Timothy, uh, we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ. This church at Colossae was known for its unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be, be good to be known for our unwavering faith in Jesus? To have such a vibrant faith that places all around would hear about it. Oh, that little church. They have an amazing faith. Did you hear what happened there? 
do you know what they do? The people there are so faithful. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that were in fact our reputation? Now, we all know that not every church has a, a vibrant living faith. Unfortunately, some churches are considered dead churches. Uh, they have become complacent, stagnant. They, they lack passion and vitality in their faith. These are, are churches that have become disconnected from the vine. They are, are no longer vibrant. They're no longer flourishing. Rather, they have withered and they're lifeless now. Then we have lukewarm churches, as described in the, the letter to the Laodiceans in, in Revelation. Um, in Revelations 3.15, we have a, a picture of spiritual complacency and indifference. These, these um, lukewarm churches are churches that have grown comfortable in their faith. They aren't hot with, with zeal or cold with conviction. They lack passion. They lack the dedication to Christ. The obedience that characterized the church at Colossae is just seems to be gone. If you stop for a moment and you consider uh, a pot of water left on a stove, you know, it's not boiling and it's not cold. It's just lukewarm. Well, that pot of water wouldn't refresh and it wouldn't invigorate, would it? In the same way, lukewarm churches, they, they don't inspire. They don't convict. They just simply exist. But here we have Colossae, a church that is strong in its faith and its reputation made its all, made its way all the way to Paul. They were like the church of Thessalonica. Um, that was also commended for its strong and loyal faith in Christ. The Thessalonians, they were, they were renowned for their endurance in times of persecution and their, their unwavering commitment to the gospel, even in difficult times, times of adversity. Well, Paul praised the, the Thessalonian and the Colossian church for their faithfulness. Can we, the people of of Margaretsville, of Lower Granville, wherever our home churches are, can we not aspire to follow their example in our own lives and within our church community? Our faith will shine brightly as well if we reflect hope and strength to those around us. So this train of thought led me to wonder, well, what would this look like? How would we get a reputation as a church with an amazing faith in Christ? Colossians 2 verse 5, Paul says, For though I am present from, though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. There's our answer. We are to be disciplined and have a, a firm faith in Christ. They weren't faithful one day and, and unfaithful the next. Through everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, they kept their faith in Jesus and they did his will. But even still, let's look a little more at what this might mean. For a church to, to have faith in Jesus, others would, would be able to look at us and see that faith expressed in, in different ways. Here's some of those, those ways. And let's ask God to help us honestly look at our own lives and the, the life of our church and evaluate as we go along. Let's ask God to open our eyes to, to where we might need to pray for the Holy Spirit's help. First, this church that would be known for its faith would have unwavering trust in Jesus. This would be the priority. 
members of the church would would demonstrate this trust in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Their faith would be rooted in the belief that Jesus is the Son of God, the only way to salvation, and the source of hope and redemption for all humanity. That's our faith. Secondly, there would be a, a consistent pursuit of a relationship with Christ. We, the church, we as individuals, we would make getting to know Christ, our relationship with him, our top priority. And this, of course, will be done through prayer times, through Bible studies, through worship together. We would commune with him daily as individuals, one-on-one -on -one with God, but also in small groups, also corporately as a church body. He would be the one we would go to for strength, for guidance in all aspects of life. How are we doing with that? Thirdly, they would see us as, as courageous in times of trouble. We wouldn't be overwhelmed by our circumstances. Instead of of giving into fear and doubt, we'd stand firm in our trust in God's promises, knowing that he is faithful and he will see us through every challenge because he has seen us through every challenge in the past. And today and tomorrow, it's no different. Faithful obedience to God's word, that would also be evident to others. Members of the church would would demonstrate their commitment to God's word by obeying what God's word says, following his commands. Their faith would be the evidence of their obedience to his teachings, even when it requires sacrifice, or even if it goes against popular, popular societal values. We know Jesus went against those societal values at times, didn't he? Stand for the truth. Fifthly, the church would have a bold witness and evangelism. A church with a steadfast faith in Jesus Christ would be passionate about sharing the gospel with others and making disciples. They would, they would go out and they would boldly, boldly proclaim the good news of salvation through Jesus within their communities, locally, as well as globally, because they would seek to fulfill the great commission that Jesus himself has given to us. Go and make disciples of all nations. Unity and fellowship. Steadfast faith in, in Jesus would, would foster a spirit of unity and fellowship within the church. Members would support one another. They would encourage one another. They would journey along with one another. They would bear one another's burdens. Celebrate each other's victories. Generosity and service would be other characteristics of a church that is known for its un, undying faith, for its steadfast faith, loyal faith. The church would exemplify Christ-like love. How would they do that? Well, they do that through acts of compassion, through being generous to serving others, both within the church, once again, and also in the wider community. Their faith would, would compel them to be instruments of God's love and mercy to those in need. And then also the church would have hope for the future. Ultimately, you know, the church with a steadfast faith in Jesus would have a profound sense of hope for the future. And this hope would be anchored in the promise of eternal life and the return of Jesus Christ. Their faith would, would sustain them through life's challenges, knowing that their destiny, it was secure. 
There's no need to worry. They know where they're going. Wouldn't it be wonderful if others see our faith expressed in these ways? Wouldn't it be wonderful if, if they would say of us, we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. So Paul had, had heard of the Colossian church's faith and he commended them for it. Secondly, we see Paul had also heard of their love they had for all God's people. This is also in verse four. Their good reputation included faith in Jesus, but it also included love being shown to others and not just one another in the Colossian church, but all the saints. This means those in other places, those in other churches, those down the road in the next community, those around the world, even those not like them. Love is the, the true mark of real Christianity. Jesus himself said that love for God and love for neighbor are the greatest commandments. Well, as they demonstrated this love for all the saints, the Colossian believers were examples to others and to us today of selfless love and compassion. Their love mirrored God himself. Their love for, for fellow believers, regardless of background or circumstance, reflected God's love. And did you know God's love knows no bounds? God's love embraces absolutely everyone. Did you know that? That is the kind of love we are to model as Christians, as the church. This love grew and was extended beyond the boundaries of their local congregations to all believers, all the saints, regardless of geographical distance or cultural differences. They understood that they were part of a larger family of faith. They were connected by their devotion to Jesus. And I can imagine it, it wasn't easy for them at times to keep up this support and encouragement because sometimes, you know, distance between them was, was long. And also, they had to be intentional and strategic in order to make it work. They made every effort. The example of the, the Colossian church challenges us to examine our own attitudes, our actions towards fellow believers, both within our church and beyond as well. Are we known for our love for all the saints? Or do we allow divisions and prejudices or indifference to stop us from expressing Christian love? May we be inspired by the, Christ, by the uh, Colossian church today to cultivate genuine love that's inclusive, a love that reflects the very heart of God. And this is for us as individuals, for us as a church body. A love that strengthens the bond of unity within the body of Christ. If you and I desire to have a, a, similar, a similar reputation as the Church of Colossae, and every Church of Christ should, then what can we do? What are some practical things? Well, we need to be diligent, just as they were, in our love for one another. We need to make every effort to become uh, better acquainted, to serve one another, to get to know one another better, to encourage. And we hear of something happening at another church, be happy for them and tell them so. When something bad happens, we cry with them and we support them. We can demonstrate our love for all the brethren and sistren by taking advantage of, of meetings together and get-togethers. This is a way to, to show our support, our love. 
We can ask God to help us love in practical ways, and we can urge each other to do so as well. Paul had, had heard of their faith and their love, but if we continue on, he also had heard the gospel was bringing forth fruit among them. And this fruit was evident not just at Colossae, but throughout the world, Paul says. Verse 6 says, In the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. Just as it had been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. Fruit was evident. Not because of the people, but because of the Holy Spirit's work within the people. It was the Holy Spirit who was revealing how deep and wide and tall the Father's love was and how His grace was for all who believed. And as the people experienced this, they, they couldn't help but share. The love the Colossian believers showed was, was more than human love human affection. It was the fruit of the Spirit. It was a love that, that transcends human limitations and is empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit living within us. This love, this love inspires the believer to act in kindness, compassion, and service. Paul says, since the day they knew the name of God in truth, they were motivated to bear fruit. How is our motivation as a church, as individuals? Do we have faith? Do we love? Is fruit being produced? God has chosen to, to use his church to spread the gospel. Are we being obedient? Are there areas we can improve in? With the Spirit's help, may others see us as a church that has faith, that loves, that produces fruit. Thank you for, for joining me today. And I do pray that you are willing to allow God to work in your life and that you pray that he will be at work within the life of your church and that your church will be known for its faith, for its love, and for its fruit. Take care and I'll see you next week.